Hey guys, what's going on? So in the video today, I'm very excited because in today's video, I'm going to be talking about this brand new pair of DVA boots. These are my new DVA Nomad boots in olive suede. Now, those of you who've been following me around for a while know I'm a huge sucker for green boots. I have two other pairs of DVAs. I have the cognac suede as well as the black suede and both are just tremendous boots and this is the third pair in my rotation from them so real quick before i really get started i just want to mention that you can save 15 percent off any order through dva using code aerosurfer lv at checkout you can save 15 percent off everything on their site right now they have the olive the cognac and the black Nomad Boots. So if you want to save 15%, use that code and uh, that'll tell them that I sent you. <laughs> these Nomad Boots in olive suede, these are going to be in an olive colored waxed suede. We've got a 360 degree Goodyear welt. We've got veg tan leather lining, veg tan leather insole, a cork footbed, lightweight oil and slip resistant soles, waxed cotton laces, on their site they say sizing runs true to size a bit extra spacious on the width for better comfort so i can say now that after i've tried both the size eight and a half and the size nine i think i actually prefer going a half size down the size nine is a good fit with thick socks it's going to fit similarly to the alden true balance in size eight and a half i would say and so yeah the size eight and a half is basically probably technically the correct fit for my foot it's it's a pretty spacious last it's pretty well rounded out at the toe that's why i think i prefer the size eight and a half as compared to nine i'm a nine brannock so for my us boot sizes i typically go a half down which would be an eight and a half so their size eight and a half fits me like a glove i could wear them with super thin socks even sockless and the fit is spot on. The size nine is just a little bit more generous, which is a good thing. Now, the, the reason why I prefer the eight and a half, so the dimensions is one thing. The other thing to take into account is the forgiveness of the leather. The leather that they use is very forgiving. It's very soft. It's almost like a slipper consistency. And so that's why sizing down a little bit is probably the better way to go. If this were a super firm temper leather, a super firm hardy high temper leather i would probably recommend going true to size but since they're they are just so forgiving these will sort of mold to your foot a lot easier much like a velvety uh, suede slipper would and so for that reason going a half down i think is my best move that said these do fit a lot better with thick socks the eight and a halfs i can't rock i definitely wouldn't be won't be able to rock my eight and a halfs in the winter with like super duper heavyweight socks. So these going true to size will be a much better option for me in the winter time. So for a sizing comparison here, we've got some Alden tanker boots in Hunter green suede. And as you can see, yeah, as you can see, even the Aldens are a little bit longer, but you can see what's happening in the toe here, right? There's a lot more volume in the toe on the DVA boots as compared to the Aldens. They're a lot more sleek a lot more of a dress boot so that's why my foot sits well in the eight and a half on the alden berry last it's because there's it's such a low volume toe profile compare that to the dva's their heel to ball yeah heel to ball looks to me to be identical at a size nine so for that reason i would say they run mostly true to size but again given what i said about the uppers being that they are so forgiving they're not super duper structured for that reason i would say a half down for me with thin socks is the perfect fit is technically the correct fit for my foot type but yeah going true to size also a solid option so that should give you some indication on how to size because as always when trying a new boot brand the sizing is always the biggest question yeah so generally a half down is what i would recommend all right so let's talk about the quality of these boots on their website, these cost $180. Obviously, a large price difference from something like Alden, something like this these days would cost $600. 
I have to say that for the price, these are an outstanding value. This is a super easy wearing shoe, super lightweight, really comfortable. The soles super easy to walk on. They're easy to style with almost anything. One thing that I do like that they do that's kind of unique is they burnish the suede. Not everybody does this. As you can see, the suede in this boot is uniform. They don't burnish it. What they would have done at the factory here to this DVA Nomad boot is after the boot was fully constructed, they would have burnished that on a polishing machine, I think, in order to smooth it out in the toe a little bit, as well as on the heel counter there. It just gives it a little bit of a different look. It definitely sets them apart from other brands because most brands do not burnish their suede, but this is a wax suede. Wax suede will be waterproof when it rains. And what else is cool is this is a true mock toe, meaning that the apron here is a different piece compared to the vamp upper. A lot of mock toes, like the mock toe in this Alden, is a fake mock toe. It's a cosmetic mock toe only. The, the vamp is all one piece of leather. All they do is they hand stitch, and you can tell it's hand stitched because the leather here sort of sticks out a little bit. Whereas on these, you can tell that they fused both the apron to the vamp. They're two separate pieces. And so this appears to be machine stitched. They didn't slick the edges on the mock toe. So that, what that means is the suede will have its velvety suede consistency, except for on this part where they burnished it. The edges here, right here, are slicked down, but the rest of it are unfinished edges. We've got unfinished edging along the eyelets here. We've got a, a rolled top. I always think that's sharp when they do that, when they do the rolled top at the throat there of the boot. I think that's a good look there. As compared to the Aldens, as you can see, they don't have the rolled top here, but they do have finished edges. So it's just an aesthetic difference is all. The stitching is machine done, very well done. And yeah, it's up against that black wedge sole. Very, very sharp, very versatile boots, very easy wearing boots, easy to throw on, a kick around in. And yeah, the other cool thing is in the tongue here, they have a lace loop, holds the laces in place. It does slow down the lace up process. You can opt out of using that lace loop if you wanted to. And it's got two speed hooks at the top though, which does increase the speed of putting the boots on. And I am a big fan of green boots. I love olive, I love the color olive, I love the earthy green tone that these boots have. Uh, they're definitely night and day different from this hunter green suede from Charles F. Stead. This leather, I believe, is sourced from La Farc Tannery in Leon, Mexico. I believe everything is built in Mexico. All, everything is sourced and built in Mexico. Leon is becoming the shoe capital of the world. It's a major shoe industry area. Yeah, handmade in Mexico, 100% leather upper, and PU patent sole. Yeah, so they're fully lined. But yeah, I would definitely put these on par with brands like Clark's, brands like Aldo, other mall brands, except the difference between these and other mall brands is these are going to be genuinely Goodyear welted shoes. You can get these resold time and time again. So what would I wear these with? So these boots would go really good with black denim, in my opinion, or dark gray denim. They'd go good with standard raw indigo. They go good with chinos. Heck, they even look good with shorts, I've found. I like to wear my cognac ones with shorts. They're super comfortable. A perfect boot for the urban commando. <laughs> Somebody that likes to dress up and look badass in an urban environment. These will easily carry you from place to place in style. I always love a good mock toe. And uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with the boots coming out of Mexico these days. In fact, my buddy uh, Christian Daniel, his boots are made in Mexico. And I have some boots, uh, some Chelsea's from him on the way. Very impressed with these. I love the casual, sleek look of the last that they use. And yeah, for coming out of Mexico, this is a very generous fitting last. Most stuff that I see coming out in Mexico is a lot more narrow. Yeah, so for that reason, I think DVA has, they've definitely earned a seat at the table. They're doing everything right, especially at this price point. So anyways, I'll leave a link to their website below. You could go check them out if you're interested. I love green boots in plain toe, in mock toe, in cap toe and all the other types of toes on a wedge sole. They look really good. 
These are my Mark Albert boots in Forest Kudu on a wedge sole. You can never go wrong with green. Green is always such a cool color. And at this price point, you can afford, if you're on the fence, you can afford to experiment around with a green boot. And so the green on this is a really nice olive color. I think olive is a good word. It's like a light olive of color. It's got notes of tan, yellow in there. It's not overtly forest green. It's a really nice, beautiful shade of green. So, and again, you can save 15% using code AeroSurferLV at checkout. So anyways, leave me your thoughts in the comments below. And anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see y'all in my next video.